Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of Home Coffee Brewing with April. For this episode, we're in Paris and we're going up here to hang out with Guillaume um, that's been brewing our coffee for quite some time and had the brewer for, for a while as well. So we're really excited to do our first video here in Paris and um, let's get inside. Awesome. So we're, um, we're on the inside, we're in Paris and um, we are brewing coffee. We are. Something like that, right? Yeah. Exactly. Do you want to walk us through like what's the what's the game plan here? Should yes. we start with the, the roasted coffee you've chosen or yeah. something else? Yeah. So I've I've chosen this coffee uh, here from uh, Cabane 53, which is a, a French uh, roastery that's uh, in the Bordeaux region. Yeah, so that's the woman that won the championship that you talked about before, right? Exactly. Oh, awesome. Melanie Bede. Yeah. Um, I really, really uh, like her coffee. And this one is from uh, Rwanda. It's one of the newer uh, coffees she's um, uh, roasted. It's a uh, Rambagira. Okay, super. And it's really, yeah. Have you tried? Because Rwandan coffee is quite, quite interesting because we, one, we haven't really had that featured here in this home brewing videos yet. Uh, and it's something that April actually isn't uh, currently roasting at the moment. Okay. Uh, is that something you've been been drinking a lot, in general? Like, are you when you deciding which coffee to get? Is it let's say based on country? Is it based on the roaster? Could it be based on the processing method or a little bit of let's say everything? Um, I do like Kenyan coffee, mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of if if there's a Kenyan coffee, that's probably the option I'll go for. Um, this one, actually, we did a, a tasting uh, with Melanie. So I had oh, a cool. couple of friends come over and she, she did an introduction to what specialty coffee is. And that was really nice. And she, we tasted this coffee. We did a little cupping session, which was my first cupping session. That's really cool. Yeah. And uh, I really actually like this one. This uh -huh. It's got some cool notes. Yeah, for sure. And so I, I did. It was, I think, one of the first Wanda coffees I, I had. Yeah. 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 Rwanda coffee is is very interesting. One because the let's say the local terroir is similar to what you find in Kenya. You know, mm -hmm. so it makes a lot of sense if you like Kenyan coffee. You kind of gravitates towards Rwandan coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, you find uh, basically only Bourbons, like red Bourbon varietals in okay. Rwanda, which is actually um, let's say a government initiative, as in they decided this is the varietal. Okay. We will be That's farming in okay. Rwanda, pretty much. I'm assuming this is a Bourbon. I'm not sure if that mm. says anywhere. Mm. Yeah, yeah Bourbon Rouge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So nice. the, we're seeing um, there's uh, we're seeing differences there now. So like we're getting geishas and stuff okay. like that, right? Uh, but it's interesting because it's kind of high altitude coffees, which usually taste quite good. A little bit more acidic, a yeah. little bit more vibrant, right? Correct. Super cool. So how are we? What are, what are we brewing? Like, are we brewing like a small dose, big dose? I was, so I was thinking of uh, 15 grams. Yeah, yeah. cool. Uh, usually I, uh, when I do 15 grams, then I do 250 of water. 15 grams of coffee, 250 grams of water. Yeah. Okay, let's, um, uh, let's get going. And we'll, we'll be using the April Brewer, yeah. the orange. Good brewer. <laughs> yeah, I chose the orange uh, purposely. <laughs> what is the main purpose? Because I see most of your gear here is black. Right, also black kitchen. Right? So yes. I see a little bit of a color theme, right? So yes. black commandante, black scale, black fellow. Yeah, but then I, orange brewer. You could have gone for the black one. I could, but that would have been like all black. That would uh. have been monotonous. I kind of like the pop of color. You need a little, yeah, sure, yeah. definitely. Which yeah. we can see here in the in the apartment as well. In the apartment, yeah. there's a pop of color. We'll show you guys later as well, <laughs> yeah. so, which for is sure. really cool. I personally like that as well, and I think it's the one of the reasons why we do the kind of colors is that. It's the contrast uh -huh. that really makes sense uh -huh. and it becomes quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Then I have my uh, Kalita 155. Kalita paper filters. Yes. No. Then I have my fellow here, which I'll fill up with the water. Was that a, was like fellow pouring kettle? Was that, let's say, like your first choice? Have you tried different kettles or was this just. So, like yeah, uh, good story. I um I had a first kettle that I bought that had the the gooseneck, uh -huh. but that was kind of a random brand. Okay, not very precise, and because I had it, I I was kind of stuck with it. And this summer it died. 
Ah. <laughs> and I was like, yes! <laughs> Finally, now I can, Finally I can choose. And so the, the next day I chose the, the fellow and yeah, I, I had okay. already honed it yeah. on, on the fellow. And that's um, like an aesthetic choice or a function at choice? At first it was aesthetic yeah. and I had read that it had a good flow. I think you did a kind of a review on it. True. Yep. And uh, so I bought it. I was like, we'll see. And th the main difference, uh, aside from the aesthetic, which is really cool, is truly the flow. Yeah. Like, compared to the other one I had, yeah. the other one was very imprecise. This one, I, I really have the pre precision I'm looking for. Yeah, sure. That's also why I kind of, I think, got, got famous in a way, because a lot of people use it in competitions. Uh -huh. And the main reason, actually, is when we compete, we have these judges that are looking at our pouring. So if we're like two grams off, for uh -huh. example, then we're actually going to be penalized score-wise. Yeah. So we have to be very accurate. So it's, uh -huh. it's one of those things where initially, I think it was more about pouring evenly to not get scored down on technicals. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much about, oh, it's going to make the coffee taste much better. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of grew into, yeah, but controlled flow is probably better for the coffee taste as yeah. well. Right? Yeah, it was, it was cool. And, and then you can, you know, manage the flow as well. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. We're pushing in the water, and then water is always an interesting one, right? Yes. Uh, now, you already told me that you have another water in the bottle than what the bottle actually shows. Correct. So, we um, in France, the, the recommended water, when you start kind of digging into the specialty, is uh, Volvic. Yeah. Um, so, we, we've been using Volvic since the beginning. Um, never tried anything, if anything else. Um, but the Volvic bottles are, um, you can buy in France, you have like these eight liter bottles, mm -hmm. but they're really big to have out on the countertop. They don't look so good. Man. And they don't look so no, good. So we found a glass bottle. This is Ureza, which is a Corsica sparkling water. Oh yeah, cool. But the bottle looks cool and it's one liter, which most sparkling glass bottles are actually smaller. So that was kind of oh, okay. the, the reason, that. the initial reason. Yeah, we got that. So then we'll warm up the water. And do we have any idea, like like temperature temperature wise, where you want to be? Uh, yes, I usually do eighty eight. So you did, and you said that before as well. And I didn't. I I kind of uh, piqued my interest a little bit, right? Because that's eighty eight. Is I would say it's a bit lower than what most of the home brewers have been using here. Uh -huh. Like we actually had a wide range of like hundred down to, I think ninety two, ninety is maybe the lowest so far. And then you're actually. A little bit below 80. What's yeah. the main reason for it? Um, well, I usually go between 92 and 88. It depends on the type of coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've noticed that I tend to prefer the, with the Honda, I prefer the 88. Okay. Yeah. So. Do, you, do you, like, would you be able to link that to something sensory wise? Like, does it make it a bit cleaner with this coffee or like juicier or more acidic or is it just like it, ta it tastes better? Uh, yeah, I feel the, the different um, flavors that are in the coffee mm -hmm. stand out better yeah. with a slightly lower temperature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which I think makes sense because it's uh, for me one. I'm gonna I'm gonna start by saying I think it's it's quite individual depending mm -hmm. on coffee, but I think in general if you kind of want to group it together, a lower temperature brew, which this would be, has this ability to I think make it a little bit cleaner, mm -hmm. and especially if you work with a coffee that isn't too lightly roasted, then I actually think it's quite helpful to make the expression a little bit cleaner. Yeah. Uh, if you work with a very, very light roasted coffee, then I would probably recommend to be a little bit higher, higher? maybe. Okay. Like 90, yeah. 92, something like that. Okay. Uh, but I think in general, I actually uh, like to be lower. So just a side note, I think this is funny because uh, we have another coffee from the same roaster and it's actually Alejo uh, from Volcan Azul uh, on the back. Yeah. So like the producer I've been working with the longest uh -huh. and the farm that I've been visiting the most yeah. as well. He works with, so. well, I think he works with Salve Cafe as well. And also, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, how, that's how I met him the first time. Okay. Basically like at, at the farm. Okay. Uh, so it's a small world uh, in the cafe. That's cool though. It's really interesting because I have personally actually haven't explored 
too many French roasters. Like it's been a while, I think, for me. And this is the first time I will ever try coffee from her. Okay. Well, so cool. I'm quite excited. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of like there's not a lot of times where I go, I try something I never actually tried before. Uh-huh. I really like that. And she's so, really, really like a very nice person. Like, oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, I mean, important. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Like nice people first. So, um, Commandante grinder. Yes. Is this uh, is this like a standard click one or a red click one? Or standard click. Standard click. Yeah. Yeah. And how many how many clicks? Are uh, twenty seven on this one. Okay. Cool. So yeah. a little bit on maybe on the coarser side. Like some of these guys will say either it's. A little bit coarser. Some will say it's a bit too fine, uh, but I think it's probably right where you want it to be. Actually, yeah, I usually do between twenty six and twenty eight. Yep. Um, sometimes I adapt a little. I, I go up to thirty. Kind of depends. And that's depending on the coffee, depending or on the coffee. depending on the coffee. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And do you is this like your go to, let's say, ratio, or do you ever brew like you know I want to brew a larger brew or a smaller brew, or you do this fifteen? Uh, usually I do, uh, the most frequent one I do is 18 mm -hmm. because we're two to drink coffee. Fair point. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that way my wife and I have both, but when I'm on my own, I do 15. 15. Yeah. Okay. I awesome. think it's a good, like I get a couple, couple glasses out of it. Yeah, sure. That's nice. And that's plenty. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I rarely do like 12. I yeah. know that. Yeah. I've done a couple like trainings where they say, oh, 12 is really recommended. Yeah. I, I rarely do that much. Okay, far enough. Okay. There's a lot of different ways to do it, right? Yeah. And I think in the end of the day, especially when you're home, it's we find for a lot of home brewers, it's really about that volume. Because, you know, either someone likes to drink a lot of coffee in the morning or like a small amount of coffee in the morning or, you know, they have partners or families or dinners. Yeah. Uh, so it really comes down to more volume. I'm a fan of a lower dose because yeah. it's like 15 is also in my head consider a lower dose okay. uh, because it's uh, easier to saturate uniformly. Yeah. So if you put like 30 grams of coffee in this filter, it will just be hard to get all of the coffee mass wet uniformly, okay. pretty much. I, I So the only, I, I with uh, filters, whether it be April or V60, I only use um, 18 is the most I would use. Yeah. Um, I do have a, um, at our, our country house, we have a um, um, Chemex. Uh huh. Yeah. So on that, on the Chemex, we do, uh, I do go up to 30. You do larger. Yeah, yeah. And it's like a bigger Chemex. It's a bigger oh, Chemex. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Which makes sense. And then um, here, when I'm home, if I want to do like for, if let's say we're four or something for breakfast, mm -hmm. then I would use a French press. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So then I go coarser and. Yeah. 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 Which makes sense. And still always on the Commandante? Yes. Always mm -hmm. come on that day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you tried like different grinders or this has been your... So the, the when I kind of started um, uh, looking into like a, buying a grinder to try, test specialty coffee, a friend of mine actually said, you should get Commandante, it's the best. And uh, so I looked around, so it, it was also the most expensive. And I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going in, I really want to do this. So I'll get it, and I've never regretted it. Yeah, like awesome. I've tried other ones because um, I have a friend who he was like, well, I don't really know what I want, so he got a Hario mm -hmm. and wasn't as precise. Like I felt it wasn't as precise. Yeah, it's different for yeah. sure. I mean, yeah. they come in a lot of different shapes and forms, and yeah, there are with there that are quality, different. right? Yeah, so, but sure. I think it's sure. it's fair to say the Commandante has grown into like the industry standard i think one thing i always like to ask is what's you know why a hand grinder versus um, like an electrical one uh -huh. for example uh, because technically you can get electrical grinders almost in the same price range now -ish, yes right correct so i'm always very curious right is that because you let's say you travel with the grinder or is it so i you... i do travel with the grinder but it wasn't the thought process when okay. i purchased it yeah. uh, when i purchased it it was more this is the Best for its worth that I can. Sure. I felt that the uh, electrical grinder grinder wouldn't be as precise. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. For sure. And now I so I do and I travel and I have like a little case that I travel with. Okay. Um, that allows me to put that the 
bag of coffee yeah the scale sure. yeah yeah that's <laughs> awesome nice that's stuff. Cool. <laughs> all right so then i'll wet the, the filter we wet the filter yeah Any, yeah so I, I do wet the filter I yeah because that's a conversation video. yeah, yeah. I saw that. i'm trying to make it into a conversation yeah, I'm yeah not that's, sure. what I, that's what <laughs> i felt I yeah. <laughs> but i don't know like there's been some some loud voices in the industry that that's you know had had strong opinions about it lately uh-huh. uh so i'm just like i'm just very curious but uh, yeah, I'm also in the wedding, the filter um, world. Yeah, I saw, I saw in your recent video, you said that, that you, you still wet it. But, but, um. I do. And I think it's more, uh, again, like a lot of my own brewing is very much based on consistency. Mm-hmm. So it's like if I brew three coffees at the same time for like a competition, or if I brew several different coffees for, um, you know, in the office or whatever or at home over the, the course of days i want them to kind of taste the same yeah. so for me it's more i want the filter to sit in a certain way in the brewer um and i want that to be the same every time pretty much so it's, it's more a consistency thing you feel wet is more consistent i think so because yeah. otherwise i'm not completely sure how the filter will sit in the brewer okay yeah so we're going for it, 15 grams. So Akaya scale, any, Akaya. any reason for, for that? Um, same thing, I, I looked around. So the, the friend I had that had recommended the Comandante, he had the um, uh, Lunar from Akaya, yeah, which sure. is the smaller one for yeah. espresso. And uh, he's like, yeah, if you want a, like a good scale. At first I was doing it with just like a regular scale yeah. and a timer uh-huh. on the side. And I was yeah. like, no, it's not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna work. <laughs> it's it's easier so, to do it like this. Yeah. So then I did it like that. Yeah. yeah. And um, Akaya, again, it's like, it's nice. I mean, it looks good. It's True. black. True. Yeah, I kind of like that black thing. <laughs> it fits all the kind of categories. Yeah, fair enough. All right, cool. So now we're gonna, Let's go. we're gonna brew some coffee. I'm gonna brew some coffee. This is always like the exciting part for me. Okay, so first pour uh, 50 grams of water. Yeah. Yeah. 50 grams of water. You're, you're going to laugh. I actually do five pours. You do five pours. Okay. Five so pours a lot of pours. 50 grams. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uniform pouring structure, which I would be a fan of in general, right? Uh-huh. What is the main, like, main argument? So I did a, a training with. Uh, uh, I think Pierre de Chambry or something like that from Pierre de Cap. Ah, yeah, sure. And <laughs> we know Pierre. Yeah. And we we tried different things, and yeah. the the five pour. Uh, here we go. Uh, five pours of fifty grams was the one that kind of gave the best results, and since then we've been kind of doing that. And if you were, you mentioned before that you might do eighteen grams if you if you brew for two. Would you have the same theory with like a uniform pouring structure? Same thing. Yeah. Same thing? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I do 45 seconds for the first pour. Yeah. And then every thir- uh, 30 seconds from every the Every first second, yeah. Yeah. And basically, you guys are going to see this as well, but more or less most of the water has gone through the coffee in between every yes. single pour. Correct. Kind of. So kind of, like of towards the stuff. end, a little bit less. But yeah, sure. Yeah. The flow rate will always be a little bit different, yeah. And then every pour is a circle pour? A uh, circle, and I try and finish towards the center. Yeah. But I, I don't play around that much on that. It's something I've been doing more recently. Yeah. Um, before, I would just do a circle pour. And, but recently, I've been trying to like finish it in the middle. Yeah. It's always going to be a little bit of a difference, right? Like uh, water has this thing where water flows faster where you pour it mm-hmm. pretty much right so mm-hmm. if you if you pour it continuous in the center the water will flow through the bed a lot faster but it will only through flow through the center right or the majority of the water will go through the center that's why for example al- alternating could be interesting or if you want to speed up the flow rate then you pour in the center so there's um, there's always ways to kind of manipulate it so what I have done um, to try, oops, what I have done to try um, something different was to try three pours. So the first fifty, still fifty grams, yeah. forty five seconds, and then two one hundred. Yeah, uh, yeah. And what do you feel has like been the difference there? I felt there were 
was a little bit lighter, yeah. like the, the result, like less, um, maybe less accentuation of the different flavors. I okay. Felt. You wanted more like more, pretty much. You wanted more like volume, more, more yeah. texture. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. I'm trying to figure out what the flavor notes of this coffee is, but maybe it's my French. Yeah, it's awesome. French. It's right here. Ah, it's violet, rhubarb, and rooibos. I can yeah. see that because it's kind of sad. Okay, so violet, rhubarb, and rooibos, which are going to be, in my world, like a pretty intense cup of coffee. Floral yeah, it's, is it's always good. Yeah. Rhubarb is awesome. Rhubarb has been, cool. yeah, like, I love, like, being Scandinavian, you kind uh -huh. of love rhubarb because that's every summer for you, pretty much. Um, a long time, though, since I tried a coffee that actually had rhubarb notes in Okay. It. Yeah. But, um, so one, I and mean, then I'm just going to like put it in here because I think it's an interesting conversation with Rwanda. And one of the reasons you, you don't see it at April is, which has actually becoming a lot better over the years as well. But they have this challenge, which is linked to an insect um, that is referred to uh, taste-wise as potato, uh, where pretty much you can have one bean um, that has been insect damage and you will grind it and it would just smell like Potato, literally, oh, okay. right? I'm not sure if you, you probably haven't uh, had that with this coffee, but it's one of those things that kind of happens in, in all of them, good or bad. Okay. Doesn't really matter. And it's, it's really it hard to sort out. When you look at the grain? No. Oh, okay. Well. And that makes it really no one's fault. And it's 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 a shame because um, with Rwanda coffee, some of the, the cups are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's just that then every once in a while, you just grind through and you smell it. And it's like, you know, to basically throw that out more or less. But um, that's why we haven't used it for a long time. But um, it's a really interesting origin, actually. Super cool. Let's try it, no? All right. Let's, Let's see. So total brew time is? Uh, 347. 347, okay. And that's where you want to be? I always try and be under four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Somewhere between 330. That's why sometimes I go up to 28 clicks. Yep. This one is, um, Do you have like a time limit for no, this is too fast? So would you say like not under yeah. three minutes for Yeah, when it's under three minutes, I'm kind of like, mm, probably too okay. coarse. Yeah. yeah. So we want to be between three and four minutes. That's, that's where like I, your that's what sweet I aim spot. For. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. my sweet spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I should say as well, for those of you that wants to, I mean, you should try this at home now, uh, but the water temperature is also going to have an impact on the flow rate. Um, yes. So that's totally. why, for example, you know, someone might say that, okay, but that sounds like a long contact time, but a longer contact time with a lower temperature is you kind of can't compare that. It's going to be very different, right? Mm -hmm. So I recommend that you try that as well, uh, because it's, if you brew with 96 degrees and you try to push four minutes, that's going to have a very different taste quality than if you do it with 88 degrees. Yeah. Right. And I think that's something people sometimes miss. Uh, in the conversation. Yeah, that, I think that's something I wish I had more opportunities of uh, doing two at the same time, like two uh -huh. coffees, you know, one in one at 24, one at 28. Yeah, I, I don't do that. No, enough. sure. Uh, I think I think the home brewing setup kind of, you know, you need to have two things, two containers, two, two scales. That's kind of the only uh, maybe downside of home brewing. I don't know. It becomes quite singular. Mm -hmm. Whereas like in a coffee shop or more more pro, you kind of you have a, a better option or opportunity to just try different yeah. recipes at the same time. Uh -huh. um, but Which I is what, what we did during the, the training that we oh, did. Oh yeah, sure. Where we kind of figured out the recipes. So we, yeah. we tried it um, with, we had your filter and then we had a V60 and we yeah. like compared the two. And yeah. That was really cool. That's also cool. And you know, I think you're, you're the first home brewer we visited that have, from at least from my knowledge, they've done like an like official course or, or something similar. Yeah. So we, when I that's how I fell into specialty coffee. So I started with uh, La Café au Tech in uh, which is in Paris. It's a, a coffee uh, store where the owner she's from Guatemala yeah. and she does like a, a, an initiation on the differences between uh, like all the different types of filters and so that was really really eye opening. And then when we wanted to go kind of the next level, Terre de Café also has a, a very strong like training. Yeah. Um, so it was nice. So yeah. That's really cool. I think yeah. that's a, it's an interesting way to, I mean, obviously you can watch YouTube here as well, right? But in the end of the day, the challenge with, uh, let's say, developing your coffee skills, regardless if you're a home or, or a professional barista, is that it's always a sensory thing. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to, you know, test it, try it, discuss it. 
uh, at the same time, right? Otherwise, there's always be this kind of level of, you know, is this how it's supposed to taste? Exactly. I don't know. You know? Yeah. So you need to kind of do that with people, which I think makes a lot of sense, right? What do we think about this? I think that this is pretty tasty. It, yeah, the taste. I don't is want very to sound surprised, but it's like it's, it's it's like quite nice. Also, for being a new roastery for me and an origin I don't work with so much, um, I will say this is really interesting. So you brewed. So obviously, like the bag has been open. So you brewed a few brews with this coffee yes. before, right? Yeah. And you so feel my my parents have a house in the area, so every time my dad goes down, I ask him to bring me back a couple bags. Ah, okay. So, yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, he, he 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 goes over. He buys the. That makes a lot of sense, actually. And then so he brought the two back. This one and then the. Yeah, that's super cool. So. Awesome. Then you guys also have a, a potentially new roaster for you guys to check out as well, which yeah. I think it's that's part of the fun as well. Mm -hmm. So like, come out and just see. It's the uh, Café Chanqué is the name. Café Chanqué. So the the cabin here is a it's a little like um, house that's yeah. in the. Arcachon Arkish, Basin, oh, and where cool. they, it's like where they do the, all the oysters, oh. and then and the, the little houses. There's two little houses in the middle of the, like this this area, that are in, in the middle of the sea. Yeah, and nobody lives there, but it's just a and and so that's the emblem that she took for the for the coffee. Yeah, yeah. and Cabane awesome. 53 is the higher end. She's got different lines of okay. coffee. Cool. And Cabane 53 is for the. So you can explore houses. like a range of coffee. Yeah. Awesome. There's there's cool options. Yeah. One one last question before we kind of round this up. Mm -hmm. So we're drinking in glass. I'm very curious um, in terms of like what people are drinking from. Yeah. Is this your go-to? Yes, I have two. I'll show you. This that's one. That's my favorite. And then I'll show you my wife's favorite. This is why we do 18 grams. Because ah. <laughs> she she drinks a lot of coffee. Yeah, she she good. likes more. So yeah. she likes this, which I like, and we drink a lot. But yeah, it's, it's, it's always one. glass. Always glass. Always yeah. glass. And how come it's always glass? Um, because so one of the things we discovered when we did that training was that you know you see the colors. Yeah. There's different colors. There's different. So seeing the coffee yeah. is really part of the experience. For okay. Us. Yeah, it's really important. That's super cool. I don't I don't like drinking from like a, a dark container. Even when I like when I put it in a travel container, for example, and go to go to work, and when I get to the office, I'll I'll pour it in a glass just to see it. Yeah, yeah. So just I mean, and this is a bit of a side note, but we 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 had a, like a morning coffee in a local yep. coffee shop here, right? right? And that got served in a really big mm -hmm. dark mug. What's your like? You go like, no, I don't want to. You know, um, it was filtered yeah. the, the brew, so I wasn't as. Um, I guess expecting as much. No, it, it was, was like okay. A bathroom, yeah, but it, but it's not. Yeah, I, I think that you know I didn't see the color, for example. Sure. So I don't know what it looked like. Like, no. what does it? I know what it tasted like. It tasted good. It was a good yeah, coffee, sure. yeah. good filter coffee. But it it wasn't like yeah, I was missing a component. Yeah. I felt. Okay, yeah, you feel that that detracts a little bit from the value, which I got. Yeah, I, I I do. I hear you. Now this one, I don't know if you have this, but at the end, I almost feel like it's a little dry on the tongue. I don't know if you have that. But that's probably what something I like, think you're very picky now, which I appreciate because I think we should be picky when we drink coffee. There is a little bit of a dryness. Um, I, I think it's hard to say exactly where that comes from. Also, we're not going to blame the roast here because that's not very polite of me. Um, but it's it's hard sometimes, I think, as a home brewer to, to lock in exactly what it is. So we're brewing with Volvic. Yeah. Volvic has a slightly, in the like range of bottled water, have a slightly higher total PPM. Okay. Um, so you're going to be around 100-ish. Okay. Okay. And the mineral composition is, I think, really good in terms of just extracting a, a, a basic coffee in that sense. But it can sometimes cause a little bit of dryness, Okay. I would say. So that could be the water. Could it could be, water. be one thing. Okay. Um, it could potentially be also uh, grind size just in real The thing is, I mean, all the flavors comes out pretty well. Yeah. I don't mind that. Yeah. And I think one of the things I want to do, and it's like, I, I always stress this, but then people think it's a bit weird is, um, um, you know, if you're doing a, a morning coffee tomorrow, just grind your dose today oh, okay. in the evening. Okay. Just leave it. Yeah, we Probably definitely keep, don't do that. Keep, keep, keep it in the jar, you know, <laughs> okay. grind it, keep it in the jar. Maybe you have the lid. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we have because a lid. Of the, yeah, yeah, so yeah, we just have a lid. screw the lid on, keep it there. And because it could be that a little bit of that, like just hint of dryness you have, just comes from the fact that you still have CO2 in the coffee. Okay. We actually haven't talked about the roast date on this coffee. 
Which I don't know because I can't see. It. Do you know? Um, no. Oh, it is here, right? Yeah, but that's the limit. No, that's the limit. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Does it say 20, 2026? Yeah. Isn't that a very long expiration date? I think that's a legal expiration date. Ah, yeah, I think sure. like the, three, three years ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually don't know when the coffee is roasted. But uh, basically, based on when it's roasted, we'll also have a big impact on it, right? But I think in general, uh, the idea with pre grinding will make it just a little bit cleaner. But I don't think it's, a, I think it's a, a perfectly acceptable cup, no? Yeah, no, it's very good. Say, yeah. No, 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 yeah, I think it's good. I'm always wondering, like, what's the, the what, what's the reason to the... I think in most cases, I would always argue it's um, a combination of small variables and how they link together mm -hmm. rather than one exclusive variable. Okay. So the thing with coffee brewing, I argue, is that you need to look at it as a system and just changing one single variable will be very difficult because, for example, um, let's say you go a little bit coarser, you might get a little bit uh, less. I mean, it's very little dryness here. Like we're very picky, actually. Like our, uh, this is way cleaner than the morning coffee, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. So it's like a better brew than what we had in the coffee shop. And um, if you then go a little bit coarser, you might get it cleaner, but you're losing the flavor yeah. intensity. Oh, the flavor is really good. So yeah. you can't just change yeah. that, right? So then you kind of have to rethink the whole the whole system mm -hmm. um, for sure. But I think in general, it comes out pretty good. So if we like summing up the brew a little bit, so uh, Rwandan coffee roasted in, in um, outside of Bordeaux. Yeah. Or like close to Bordeaux. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. April Brewer. Plastic. Plastic. We haven't talked about what, why plastic, not the other. You told me a little bit this morning. Uh, <laughs> I have both. doesn't break. I yeah. have, the, yeah, I have the ceramic as well. I actually think the ceramic is, uh, gives more intensity. So I do oh, like sure. the, yeah. the ceramic yeah. uh, to the taste. Um, I, I I like changing it up. I really there's no I I don't have like a strong preference for one or the other. Yeah, um, which makes sense. I yeah. think it's and it's right because what it comes down to between the plastic and the ceramic is basically the design of the brewer and the angles of the brewer is a little bit different. Okay, which is a design feature, but also a production feature. Okay. Basically, when you produce plastic, you can be very precise in reference to the drawings you're okay. doing. Yeah. When you do ceramic, you have to always go, okay, but I'm also producing this. I need to have a mold and a factory that is able to produce it mm -hmm. as close to what I want it to be, right? Um, so you did 15 grams of coffee, 250 grams of water, I want to yes. say. We're exactly. brewing on a lower temperature water yeah. because it gives it a little bit... Um, basically showcases the flavors or the yeah. taste attributes a little bit better. I, I thought it did it really well yeah, today. Exactly, yeah. which I think actually makes a lot of sense. Um, and what came out was actually a coffee that was, I get the violet pitch for sure, uh, which I think is really nice. I get the rhubarb also, maybe yeah. not as intense as I would rhubarb to be, okay. given it's a quite intense thing, but I still get it. Roybas? Not so much. Not I so agree. much, maybe. Yeah. But that's for me because roybas is quite spicy. Right, and I don't think this is spicy. No, uh, but I like that because I would, for me, that would just mean that it's a little bit of a cleaner cup, which I actually appreciate. Yeah. The the rhubarb, it's funny because when we did the cupping, mm -hmm. it was really strong. Oh, like, yeah? sure. I don't know if it was because maybe it was roasted more recently or why, yeah. but and and since then I've I've had it some more. You still feel it. I mean, definitely it's there, uh -huh. but not as intense as my memory no. from that first cupping. I'll and I don't you, know if it was new. I, I, mean, it's, uh, I think there's always a, a, a range of factors for that, mm -hmm. but I'm going to argue that the main factor, and it's quite common for, for a roaster to go through this kind of sensation, is that on a cupping table with an unfiltered coffee, because that's what it is, yes, right? There's no exactly. paper filter. Correct. You actually have coffee displaying very differently. And I think um, quite often, if you just look at flavor complexity, uh, flavor, like individual flavor quality, that will always be better on a cupping table than when you brew it. Okay. Always. Okay. Because I think that paper filter is actually making it a little bit difficult. Okay. Yeah.
So do you recommend like doing cuppings regularly? Is that something you would? I think it's fun. Um, I don't think, I mean, obviously it's a morning coffee. I wouldn't necessarily no, set up a cupping, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, it's, I think it's in terms of understanding the coffee you're brewing better. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Be um, but then again, it's, um, we also filter the coffee for a reason and you kind of want to be able to sit down and just enjoy the coffee, right? Yeah. So it's true. Um, that's true. So I think, you know, it makes sense to filter it, but to really taste the full potential, it could make sense to, to do a cupping as well, to just get an idea. Yeah. Awesome. Then, okay. um, I want to thank you for letting well, thank, us no, <laughs> come in here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it, it was super cool. fun, right? It was and, fun. Uh, a lot of fun. Definitely. Also Thanks really you. cool to be here in Paris, right? And as always, like, thank you guys for, for watching as well. And, you know, comment, ask questions. I think based on this video, there's quite a few questions uh to be asking things you can test right and we always love to hear about um what you kind of get out of it right so you know are you you know try the lower temperature and tell us how it works out for you right i think that's really interesting i know you have opinions on brewing water and grinders and all of this right so you know just share it's always nice it's a yeah, bit of totally you know, the conversation is the comments on these videos is like half the fun okay. i think because yeah. i'm just going through them and i go okay that's interesting uh -huh. um sign up for patreon that's where I basically i tell you where i'm going next so if you want to be a part of the videos it's a good you know part is a good place to be because then you get the opportunity right um so with that just want to say thank you again for inviting us thank super you. nice Patrick, and yeah. that's thank great. you guys for watching as well yeah. and uh, thanks to everyone have a good day. All right. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.